Welcome to Engineering with Rosie. Today's topic is actually one that has been requested by a few people. I'm going to be talking about the concept of design lifetime. And I think that this idea is surprising to a lot of people. The idea that engineers design products to last a certain amount of time. Maybe uh, to some people it even sounds kind of like a conspiracy theory, like are engineers designing things to purposely fall apart at a certain time just so that people will have to replace them? Now, I can't speak for engineers in all industries and perhaps some types of products are purposely designed to fall apart so that you need to buy a new one. I mean, I feel like microwave ovens, for example, do not last as long as they used to. But I think in most cases, and certainly in the industries that I have worked in, the concept of design lifetime is to make sure that every part of the product will either last the full lifetime or have a replacement plan to make sure all the interrelated components can work together as easily as possible and to help keep costs low by not over-designing some components that will outlast the useful lifetime. So why not design everything to last as long as possible? Isn't that what good engineering is? Um, I've worked the last eight or so years in the wind industry, so let's investigate this idea using the example of a wind turbine. Since the wind itself is free, the main cost of wind energy is due to the cost of the components and installation. Once you have a turbine installed, it's very cheap to run compared to fossil fuel alternatives which need to pay for fuel. So the longer that the wind turbine can keep operating, the more energy you'll get in return for that initial investment that you made to buy the turbine and install it. So a longer life is better, right? The answer to that is yes, yes it is. Longer lifetimes for wind turbines are one of the major reasons that the cost of wind energy has fallen a lot over recent years. A decade ago, it was typical for wind turbines to be designed with a 20 year lifetime. And now 30 years is not uncommon. So what's changed? Did it only just occur to wind energy engineers that a longer lifetime is better? Or were they sneakily designing turbines to fall apart after 20 years just so that the wind farm owner would need to buy new ones? Well, it's neither of these things. Some components are just very hard to design so that they last a long time. If these short lifetime components are easy to replace, then you can have a maintenance schedule just like your car does or say an aeroplane. And you replace components as you know they're getting close to the point where they will wear out. But some components are both hard to design to last a long time and they're hard or expensive to replace. If your car chassis was damaged and irreparable, in many cases you wouldn't replace it because it will often cost more to replace than to just buy a new car. In the example of a car chassis, auto engineers are able to design them with a very long lifetime, so it isn't a big limitation on how long cars last. If they are damaged, it's usually due to situations outside the designer's expectation, like a collision or severe rust if the car was used in areas where they salt the roads in winter, or a very humid or coastal environment. In the example of a wind turbine, there are some components that fall into this category of being both hard to replace and hard to design so that they last a long time. One example of this is the pitch bearings. Uh, the pitch bearings are the ball bearings that are located on the hub where the blades are attached. They allow the blades to twist to change the angle that the blade hits the wind and also to rotate as a brake or to start up in low wind speeds. Pitch bearings operate in a very challenging environment. They need to transfer large forces from gale force winds on the blades and they are difficult to keep clean and to maintain them since they're located about 100 meters up in the sky. Furthermore, pitch bearings are difficult to replace. You would generally need to take the hub and the blades off the turbine to replace them, which means getting a huge crane onto the site. It's an expensive and a long procedure, and of course you can't use the turbine the whole time that the blades are on the ground. It's not cost effective to do this routinely, so turbines are designed with pitch bearings that last the full lifetime. In the early days when pitch bearings were new, the technology was simply not mature enough to be confident that they would last longer than 20 years. And pitch bearings aren't the only limiting component. A wind turbine is a large system with a lot of different subsystems working together. Some components are, like the pitch bearing, hard to design to last beyond a certain amount of time and are hard to replace. It doesn't make sense to have a design lifetime that is longer than the critical component with the shortest lifetime. Like, if you're designing a bridge, you wouldn't design a road surface that could last a thousand years if the bridge underneath it will only last a hundred. It just makes no sense. For a wind turbine, as technology advances, the lifetimes of these critical components are extending, which means the overall turbine lifetime can extend too. 
And there's another reason why engineers work with a design lifetime. As well as those critical components that are hard to make last a long time, there are components that you can design to have pretty much whatever lifetime you like. Examples of these would be uh, the tower and the blades. Okay, I don't want to say whatever lifetime you like because some pedant is going to write in the comments that a million years lifetime for a wind turbine tower is unrealistic. But certainly you can design a tower or a blade that will last much longer than a pitch bearing or a gearbox, for example. But you wouldn't want to, and I'll explain why. The lifetime of a lot of wind turbine components is dictated by fatigue loading. Fatigue loading means small loads that are applied a large number of times. You can think of it as the components eventually getting tired out by these small repeated loads. That's why it's called fatigue. It's the same effect as when a paperclip is repeatedly bent back and forth. The bending force is too small to break it on the first or the second or the tenth bend, but if you have enough bending cycles, even a very small force will eventually break the paperclip. A wind turbine blade is subjected to bending from the wind and also from its own weight. Every time the blade reaches the three o'clock position, it bends towards the earth due to gravity acting on the blade's mass. And then it bends back the other way when it goes through the nine o'clock position. If you add up all the small bends from gravity and wind together with the larger bends from strong wind loads, eventually the blade's fatigue strength is used up and the blade will break. The way to increase the amount of time before this will happen is to make the blade stiffer. If it bends less with each small force from gravity or the wind, then it will take longer to break. The easiest way to make a blade stiffer is to either change the material or to add more material. Wind turbine blades are mostly fiberglass, so you could swap some of the fiberglass for a stiffer material like carbon fiber, but that costs a lot more, so it increases the cost of wind energy. Or you can simply add more fiberglass to make the blade stiffer. That also adds a little extra cost, and even more significantly, it makes the blade heavier. Since the weight of the blade is carried by other turbine components, these will all need to be strengthened to be able to handle the heavier blades. So you will need a bigger foundation, a stronger tower, and you've even made the job of the pitch bearings even harder, which might reduce their lifetime kind of counterproductive. In a complex system like a wind turbine, every component's design affects something else. So you can see why it's not good engineering to make the blades as stiff as possible. Instead, you'll get a better turbine overall if you design the blades to be exactly as stiff as they need to be, with a safety margin, of course. So that's a quick summary of the main reason that engineers design products with a design lifetime, instead of trying to design everything to last forever. There are just a couple of other related points that I want to talk about that will hopefully get you thinking. The first is that technology develops quickly. Engineers who work on products with decades long lifetimes don't know what the world will look like at the end of their product's life. Coal power plants, for example, have lifetimes of around 40 to 50 years. In the United States, 74% of coal power plants are over 30 years old. And in Australia, the figure is similar. There are plenty of them around that were installed well before anyone was worried about climate change or particulate pollution and before we knew that renewables would one day supply cheaper electricity than coal plants could compete with. It wouldn't have ended up looking like a sensible decision if the, if the coal plants of 40 years ago had been designed to last 100 years since the world will have moved away from coal well before their lifetime would be up. And going back to wind energy, for a new wind turbine with a 30 year design lifetime, most of the engineers designing it will retire before the wind turbine does. So if you were to design a turbine with a lifetime of 100 years, you'd be making a big bet without knowing what the future will look like. If you look back to wind turbines from 20 years ago, they were very small compared to modern turbines. And there are a lot of features on modern turbines that make them more efficient that the old ones didn't have. So the old turbines generate a lot less power even though they're often located in sites with really great wind resources. So it often makes sense to pull these old turbines out and put in modern ones instead, as you can get much more green electricity from the site this way. So if we were trying to make turbines with very long lifetimes, there would be a big risk that this would happen before it even reached the end of its lifetime. Isn't it better to design a cheaper turbine that will last 30 years? Then we can install more of them, which means that we can more quickly reduce our carbon emissions. So that is my thoughts on design lifetime. Perhaps it was a bit more complex than you were expecting. Um, and I hope that it will get you thinking about some of these issues that engineers and engineering companies are dealing with every day. 
As always, please let me know in the comments if there was a concept that you didn't understand or a question that you have or another topic that you would like to see me cover in a future video. And if you want to see more videos like this, then please subscribe and like and share with your friends or colleagues. I'll see you next time. Thank you.